for Monday, December 19th. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Hasselbrink. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dobie. Here. Council Member Turco. Here. Council Member Murphy. <clears throat> Absent. Council Member Nafolda. Here. Great. And if you could stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation. <clears throat> please join me as we honor our flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, okay. Lord, I just want to thank you. I thank you for getting us through the year of 2022. I thank you for what you have in store for our city, for our leadership, for our law enforcement, for our first responders. I thank you that uh, as we end this year that we would do so in excellence and that we would begin this new year with excellence, that this is our last meeting for 2022. And I'm very excited for what we will do together in 2023 for Los Alamitos, working together as a community, as leaders, as teachers, as students, and as neighbors. I thank you in advance for the beautiful things, for the businesses that will come, for those that are here that would flourish, and for all the grace that you extend to us and that we extend to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Um, if council can join me up front for some presentations. go ahead and change things up a little bit first. Um, so this last year, we started the Los Alamitos Community Foundation as an arm of the city to be able to raise funds as a nonprofit. And so the foundation has a board of directors represented by a number of residents and also businesses. And we had reached out to the city and asked them what their wish us. What, what would they like to see that maybe the general fund probably couldn't fund or it wasn't top on the priority list? And we came up with three different um, priorities, uh, one with park and reps to do the adaptive, um, I missed the name of it. Thank you. Adaptive recreation for both our events and also at parks to help our special needs kids so they can participate in some of our wonderful programs we have. With Public Works, it was Tree City USA. And if you've started seeing it, we planted 50 trees down the boulevard and we're gonna hit uh, Cerritos and Catella next. Um, so that's the other initiative. But the initiative that's near and dear to my heart that we're actually celebrating tonight is the chief came to us and said, you know, it would be really cool if we had our own canine unit here. Um, for search, for uh, sniffer dog, um, all kinds of stuff, and other agencies have it, and so it was something that we put on our priority list, and between the city and the foundation and this wonderful, wonderful man that I'm gonna be bringing up in just a couple of minutes, um, we're able to launch that program um, today, and we're gonna be doing the canine. We brought a couple of samples um, in case we don't know what canine programs are. <laughs> Um, all, the, all the dogs are now trained uh, for attack, for search, and also for sniffing. Um, we're not going to do a lot of attack or search, hopefully, in Los Alamitos. Um, that would be um, not good. Um, but mainly for sniffing and also for community events and everything. There's something about when you bring a dog to a community event. Um, it just adds a little bit something to it. So um, there is a man here, good looking man. And he has been in La Salle for a long, long time. And when I tell you that he talks the talk and walks the walk, I, I'm not joking. This man does this. Um, everybody knows Kenny Brandenberry. Um, he started Mr. B's, which is now Griffin's Grill. He started the starting gate. And if you haven't seen Elvis driving around lately, you haven't been in La Salle for very long. Um, he's very involved with Casa Youth Shelter. Um, he puts his money where his mouth is. Those are his kids. Um, he's been in there for a long time and making these programs just amazing. And he has generously, um, wow generously um, helped launch our canine program. And I would like to bring Kenny up here for a special presentation. <laughs> so
So with Kenny's generosity, he is donating $15,000, which is the cost of the canine, um, to launch our program. Um, and I'm telling you, without this, I don't know when we'd be able to launch it, but you've actually, it's just amazing what you've poured into this community, just over and over and over again. Well, I love Los Alamitos. I've been here for 60 years. And I'm 84 and rocking, let me tell you. I would like to try to present this check to City for $15,000. Mm. Yeah. You're just a dog. And, and if anybody wants to stop by and buy him a drink, he's at the American Legion seven days a week. Um, so he is, a, he is available, but he is a known entity in our community. And I'm telling you, he just lives La Salle. And um, I'm just honored to call him a friend. Um, he did have one stipulation with the dog, um, that the dog will be named Elvis. Um, <laughs> So we are actively looking for a female dog because I just think that would be fun. So, but Kenny, thank you so much. You have no idea this is going to um, boost our public safety program uh, well beyond all of our years. And I just thank you for just making La Salle your home. Well, I'm just honored to do it. Good. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. I'm sorry, I did want to bring up the foundation members. I'm sorry, this is fairly new for me. Um, do we have the foundation? We have Deb Kent. We have Dan. Debbie. Yeah. Do we have others? Anybody else? On here? John. I think this is it. So this is a smattering of our foundation. Um, we're going to be doing, we were at the Winter Wonderland um, serving adult beverages and um, adults really like those beverages. So uh, we did pretty good in the fundraising on that. And so you'll be hearing a little bit more about us. We will be doing a casino night in February at the community center and starting um, our little grassroots program to, to help the city out with some of these special programs. Much. And Kenny, right. once again, thank you. My pleasure. Believe me, I love this city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. um, who do I give this to? <laughs> <laughs> and then, am I turning this over to you now? Yeah, I'm going to turn this over to our mayor pro tem. Hey, y'all. How's everybody doing? I have never seen this many people in this room. <laughs> I'm so happy you're all here. So we have uh, some special presentations, and we're going to do it a little different because we have presentations for Mr. Cherko and also for our illustrious Queen Mayor Hasselbrink. So if you have a presentation for both, when you come up, please feel free to present at the same time. First up, I will have the representative David Ochoa for Senator Tom Umberg's office. Come on down. <laughs> yeah, I know you have some words. Hi everyone, I'm David from the Office of State Senator Tom Umberg. And although unfortunately we do not any longer represent Los Alamitos, we have had the privilege of representing it for some time. Uh, with the help of M Council Member Chirko and Mayor Hasselbrink, and we would just like to thank them for all of their many years of service um, and present them with these certificates of recognition. Um, Council Member Chirko, your charisma and your compassion and your public service attitude when it comes to being on council has really left a mark on the city, and we're glad that you were able to give the time every month to be here and work to make Los Alamitos a better place. Um, I will say, though, that my boss was not happy when you beat him in the 5K. <laughs> every time I bring you up, he does say, that's the guy that beat me, right? Hey, I, it was my first 5K, and I told him, was, this is my first 5K. Oh, he, he always mentions that, yeah, too. Yeah, you had to tell me it was your first 5K. And then you beat me. <laughs> Funny memory. 
Uh, not so much for him, but <laughs> for the rest of us, just a little bit. Uh, Mayor Hasselbrink, you as well, your commitment to public service and your just continued presence here on the council has spread far beyond Los Alamitos throughout Orange County. Your commitment to being here, to helping people, to making Los Alamitos a much better place and a much more welcoming place is something that we very much appreciate here on the dais and we can't wait to see what happens next. And I did not beat him in the podcast. Yeah. You did not. <laughs> That's why he likes you more. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, on behalf of the Senator's office, I'd like to present both of you these certificates of recognition. Here, I'll hold this, you do that. Next up, we have the senator from Janet Nguyen's office, Mr. George. Come on down. Here you go. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor and Council, uh, for allowing our office to be here tonight. My name is George. I'm with Senator Janet Nguyen's office. Just wanted to come by and say on behalf of the office of Senator Janet Nguyen, we'd like to say thank you to Council Member Chirico for all his years of service here. And we wish you the best in your coming years in whatever capacity you decide to serve in. And uh, Mayor, over your uh, leadership throughout the course of the uh, previous year, all that you've done for the city, it, it was great. I, I just loved attending all the Los Alamitos events that the city put on. Uh, the Trunk or Treat was one of the most recent ones we went to. That was really a blast. I think that was probably one of the most successful ones you, the city has had. But you know, on behalf of Senator Wynn, we'd just like to say thank you for all that you've done for the city and what you continue to do in uh, the coming years. So thank you both. And on behalf of Senator Janet Wynn, I'd love to present a uh, assembly resolution. Uh, we have to put these in it much in advance to get them out in time. So I know these say assembly. There you go. You know, thank you both for your service. Thank you. Picture. All right, next up we have Assembly Member Tree Talk. Come on down. <laughs> Good evening, the Honorable Mayor and Council Member. I'm so honored to be here. I'd like to extend my congratulations uh, to uh, uh, Mayor uh, for your for your leadership, for your uh, for your dedication in serving the community. I had an honor to work with the Mayor on uh, on County Fire Authority Board of Director. She amazing. Uh, so really appreciate everything you've done for the community, and I want to thank. Uh, uh, Council Member Joko for everything for uh, serving the community. So I wish you really successful in the future and continue to be a really good access for the community. So, Los Alamitos is in my district. I represent the uh, 70 district and I love to get involved with the Los Alamitos uh, community. So I have the certificate on behalf of California State Assembly for Council Member Joko. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, and for the honorable mayor. Thank you. <laughs> I also have a certificate for Kenny. I'm not sure that he's available, but if he is, I would like to invite him to come up. And I'd like to uh, introduce uh, one of my staff, Michelle mm -hmm. Shoot. So, uh, Michelle will be my main point of contact for my assembly district uh, while covering the city of Los Alamitos. Yeah. Come on, I'm Kenny. Yeah. Oh, Come on, you want to I have my uh, <laughs> resident. Yeah. Okay. You're on your way to the Legion. You gotcha. Hello, sir. So, on behalf of uh, California State Assembly, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to express my appreciation to your kindness. Uh, to your commitment in serving Los Alamitos mm -hmm. community. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. 
Thank you. All right. And then is Nisi here? Or do we have a chamber representative here? Going once, twice? Well, all right. Um, we have certificates for y'all from the chamber. And uh, yes, please distribute accordingly amongst yourselves. Very good. Um, and then I think, is that it? That's it. Hey, that's it. We moving right along. All right, now we're going back to the regular meeting, um, oral communications. At this time, any individual in the audience may come forward to speak on any item with the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Remarks are to be limited to not more than three minutes per speaker. Um, given the turnout this evening, I'm assuming that a number of guests are here to uh, make comments on the development project um, that's been proposed on the Lamson Avenue. Uh, while we welcome any and all comments, I do want to point out that this project and the city's housing element are not on the agendas this evening. As such, there won't be any discussion of these topics. Given the anticipated number of speakers, <clears throat> if none of my colleagues object, I'm going to propose that we limit public comments to three minutes per speaker in order to ensure that everyone is given an opportunity to speak in a timely manner. Take it for that? Yeah. Okay, so um, first up for public comments. I don't have any blue cards with me. You, you can just, you can just, yeah. yeah, you don't need to hand the blue card now. Thank you, though. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't start the clock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Tall people thing. Um, <laughs> Um, thank you um, for the opportunity to speak before you. My name is Patty Seneca. I live in College Park East, wonderful neighborhood. And I would just like to um, point out that we were not satisfied with the Planning Commission last week. We did not get explanations as to zone two, ver um, zoning of two versus three. And I, I know you're voting on this in January, but I just want to uh, point out that this uh, project may meet your arena numbers. But the burden gets dumped on us, and that's what we're concerned about. The burden goes to College Park East, it goes to Garden Grove, and it goes to Rossmore. We have crushing traffic now on Seal Beach Boulevard, trying to use the shopping centers, getting on and off the freeways. Um, we have cumulative impacts we'd like you to consider, and um, that is we have the Long Beach Airport flying over our homes, we have the military base, we have the sound wall that, to our objections, was moved in and is just crushing the end of our neighborhood with noise. We have this new on-ramp that is like NASCAR. You take your life into your hands trying to get on to the freeway now. People coming up the 22. We've got expansion for Old Ranch on the drawing. And so again, we're looking at cumulative impacts to our housing. The loss of public space, public open space is devastating, not to have a soccer field for our children. So again, um, we're concerned about the impacts being dumped onto our city when the benefits go to your city to meet your numbers and the taxes go to you as well. I'd also like to um, look at, you have a VMT study coming. I was reading your agenda. It's not just the VMT miles, it's how the miles are used. And when we're creeping along, sitting on Seal Beach Boulevard, you know, taking 15, 20 minutes to get over here because traffic is so crushing now. It's amazing how the traffic is picked up. So I would also encourage in a VMT study to look at how the miles are used when you're doing five miles an hour versus something else. So um, thank you for your time and appreciate the consideration and congratulations on your presentations tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Michael Gatto. I'm a resident of College Park East. 
This is Benjamin. He would not let me give him to his mother. <laughs> I attended the planning commission meeting um, last week, and I brought a picture of my four kids, but I did one better tonight and brought them all. They're here tonight. See, my, my kids are in the back. Um, just wanted to echo what the previous um, person had mentioned about our concerns about the high-density project that's planned for the area on Lamson. Um, we understand that you need to meet your arena numbers, but this decision, this impact, is um, really uh, our burden. And uh, it's going to impact AYSO soccer. Our kids play in that league, and nobody's going to be able to park to play in the park. I know the developer said they're, they're going to leave some space to play, but without parking, that's kind of impossible. Um, we're also concerned about the increase in traffic, traffic collisions. We understand that a, a, a light will not, is not planned to be put in, and so people will only be able to turn right out, out of the, the residential area, um, which means they'll probably be making a lot of U-turns at Heather, Heather Avenue um, in our neighborhood. We're also concerned about parking in our neighborhood. And we moved to this area just for a better life and um, to raise our kids in a wonderful community. And we're neighbors. So we just ask that you consider the, the, the impact, the cumulative impact of, of this decision on all of us. Thank you for consideration. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm John Lang, and I live in Parkwood, so I am a Los Alamitos resident. And I think the concern is, and I've talked to Michael, he lives in Parkwood as well. Um, there, there's a, such a thing, I worked for Toyota for 38 years. I worked in planning, where to put dealerships. So I understand kind of what you guys are going through in terms of plan, the planning process. But one of the concerns that I have are traffic, the fatalities that have occurred. I witnessed a person being killed on, on Lampson a few years ago. And so it's very dangerous. I also ride my bike on Lampson. I've tried, and I have, I've had to quit because it's so dangerous, because Los Al and Seal Beach do not have bike trails that are actually safe at all. Uh, so that's one consideration. The other, as the gentleman just spoke, um, this, this issue of no left turn and no light coming out of that area is, is very concerning to me. And the reason I say that, we have a light on Tulip. And I almost got killed trying to cross the street after I was doing a bike ride to get into Parkwood because somebody ran that light. Now, when you at least if you have a light, you're going to have people stop, right? Most of the time. <laughs> okay. In this case, this per some uh, uh, an alert motorist said stop because I never would have seen around his SUV to see the other car or the truck, the F-250, coming down, barreling through at 50 miles an hour. These are the kinds of things that I'm concerned about, the children that are going to be living in this community and so forth. So, so the traffic issue is very, very important to look at, and you really need to look at whether, you know, if you're not going to put lights in there. I've already seen on AYSO days people taking left turns through the, uh, to go towards Garden Grove when it's actually a left turn coming from the opposite direction. So you've got all of these mishaps are going to occur, and and if we do this as a community, it's going to cause a lot of pain and suffering, and somebody's going to die as a result of it. And that's really what this is concerned about. The second concern is that when I look at the numbers of parking spots, you're looking at daytime parking is not a problem even in Parkwood, but nighttime parking is very congested. The same thing is going to be true with it. And, and I have no objection to having lower income housing or anything like that. But when you look at the numbers of 98 apartments and uh, or 78 apartments and 98 parking spots, that's not going to work. Like in Parkwood, we have people. One of my neighbors has five cars. Okay, so what a, what would a family like that do that's living in one of the three bedroom units? Where are they going to park all their cars? So these are the concerns that you really have the real life situation and the safety of the new residents that will be there in addition to the residents that live across the street from us in Seal Beach and also for the people in Parkwood. And so I just wish that you consider this and think about the density and how you can solve these. I've already talked to the builders 
and I said, you know, I don't know what the, the height requirements are in the city, but you know, in, in other apartment complexes that I've seen, there's underground parking, there's other ways you could raise the building, you could add additional parking. You do that, you put some traffic lights in there, and you get some sense of safety. But right now, the way I'm reading this, having talked to everybody from the city, I've been to city planning numerous times, you know, I'm not getting a sense that that's being considered, that we're just looking at numbers, and we can't look at numbers. We need to look at people's lives, and we need to look at, at safety of the residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have every, any other comments? Come on up. Come on up. Hi. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Derek Boyer, and um, I'm a resident of College Park East. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm here tonight to, to voice just a, a sort of a more universal concern that got voiced um, during the planning council meeting. I heard a lot from the planning council about RENA numbers and about how uh, the state of California is requiring that we meet these density requirements. But there's a greater concern that I think all of us should be thinking about. Um, and I, I don't think there's a single person in this room who hasn't regularly received reminders from the state of California about our water usage about how we're supposed to take shorter showers and we're not supposed to, you know, drought tolerant this and that. And it, it just doesn't make sense to me that we're gonna try to draw on those resources to pipe new water mains and a whole bunch of, of the resources that we already struggle to use responsibly to a project like this. So everybody talks about the sensibility of safety and, um, and, and, and uh, the, the planning here that's impacting us and our quality of lives. But I think the biggest elephant in the room that we all feel every day is how much water we use or, or we try to not use. So I, I'm just sort of begging you guys to think about the fact that you're gonna create more scarcity to the resource that all of us taxpayers are gonna end up paying more for, right? I mean, water's not gonna run out, I don't, I don't think, right? But as it gets down to a trickle over time, we're hastening that and it's going to cost more money for all of us. And everybody in this room will be affected by that basic fact. Where's the water gonna come from? And how is that gonna impact the quality of the lives of everybody who's already here uh, trying to be responsible you know, uh, about that? And, and I hear a lot of people talking about whose problems this will be and whose concerns, and this is on the far edge of Los Alamitos, and oh, you know, the people of Seal Beach and College Park East, we're really concerned about our very local impacts, but this is gonna be everybody's problem about, about the draw on water. Um, and that's part of what we're supposed to be listening to the state of California about as well. So I'm begging you guys to consider that um, for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Council. My name is Christine Arfwetson. I'm a resident of Parkwood, Los Alamitos. Uh, I agree with everything that's been said. I realize that this project is not before you tonight. But at the Planning Commission, we were advised that we were late to the party, that um, we were advised, and if we weren't, basically it's our fault. Uh, of course, I don't agree with that. But uh, it's been rezoned for this project, the West Ed area, R3. That's exactly what the developers need and wanted. So, my concerns. Number one, you have a process here as a planning commission where it's all one way. You graciously let us uh, give you our concerns, the issues, and you say nothing. No transparency, no validation that you actually hear us. And I guess I would say, not only is there no transparency, it doesn't make people feel heard. And I'm saying to you, when you get the EIR report, and it is then before you, you need to have an open, two-way uh, meeting where you can actually impart some information to us. Because let me tell you what this process is gonna bring you. 
This isn't a threat, threat. this is reality. People here are very upset uh, for all the reasons you're hearing. I'll tell you what's out uh, in the community. The developers have told people uh, who have spoken to them that why bother, it's a done deal, and um, you know we did already reduce the density. It's the way it is. And by the way, uh, Seal Beach City government uh, is not going to help College Park East residents with their protestations of any kind uh, in agreement with all under the table. Los Alamitos government not protesting the uh, old ranch development. Is this misinformation? Who knows? But when you can't ask any questions and get any answers, these are the things you hear. We also have been made aware that the superintendent of schools and people on this city council have been in receipt of campaign donations from the developers. Ah, uh, gee, that would be a major conflict of interest, wouldn't it? Think about it. Think how it looks. Is that misinformation? I think not because that's public information. If you're in receipt of donations for a project that comes before you, that you vote on, it looks corrupt. It may be legal, but it's unethical. So I'm telling you, I'm not begging you, I'm advising the council, we vote. College Park East is begging you, we're vo voters. And you are to protect us, our interest, our city, not yourselves. So those aren't accusations. I'm telling you what is out in the ether that you're going to have to deal with. Okay, so I suggest a public forum so you can answer questions because you are the people with the information, not us, and we need it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Susan Kaler. I also live in Parkwood. Um, I've lived there 21 years. We had an issue when I was on the HOA as president several years ago that they were looking in our complex to put people that were kind of halfway house. And when I came to city council and discussed that, they really weren't aware of what our community was about or what we looked like. The fact we have one way in only. So now we're looking at our next door neighbors. Not only are they gonna have one way in, but there's going, to, we have 103 homes. There are over 300 units planned in that community. And it's not a bigger space really than where we live. So the infrastructure of the city is gonna suffer. Yes, our traffic is already crazy. As I said, they're gonna come out and do U-turns because that's what they do out of the dog park. And we're very concerned. Utilities, as he said, water, electricity, all of the utilities in our city, our police and our fire, we're really not set up right now for this type of addition to our, especially our local area. We're ignoring Seal Beach, College Park East, I'm not against people living there, but a community the size of Parkwood would fit perfectly in there. 103 homes is probably the max they could fit in there comfortably and not outdo the space and the infrastructure of Los Alamitos. The other issue that nobody's really discussed and I hate to go there, I'm afraid this community is gonna destroy the housing costs in our community. We love having more people. Our schools would love to have more people. We worked really hard to afford to live in this community. And the way this is changing looks like it's going to change where we live, how we live, and the fact that we have worked this hard is going to downgrade all of that for us. We're not happy about it. There's a lot of Parkwood residents in here. I don't know if everybody's gonna speak, but it's really gonna change the way we live and that's not what we're here for. So we hope that yes, you protect us, you come and look at our community, you come and evaluate it and compare it to what they're looking at putting in there. 
and come talk, knock on our doors, talk to us anytime. We would love to meet all of you and discuss what we think is best for Los Alamitos and that part of our town. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, John Arf Wedson, uh, Parkwood, uh, Los Alamitos, voting citizen. Um, I know there will be uh, uh, dates, times, and meetings in the future to debate the, the merits and the demerits of, of this, uh, the West Ed situation. I, I want to focus specifically on uh, the idea that Les Johnson, the former city manager of Los Al, is going to be the author of the environmental impact report. Now, on the face of it, that doesn't sound too good. That sounds like a person who's paid by the developer and connected to the developer and associated with the developer is going to write an opinion about the way the thing should go. Now, I think all, all of you have been in politics long enough to know that you uh, have to be aware of the way things go and the way things are presented. But you have to be very aware of the way things appear. This doesn't appear too good. I think the person authoring that should be objective, disinterested, and separated. Otherwise, the results will be seen by people like the fix is in. So you need to think long and hard about that, too. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Uh, I'm Larry Nutter, and I live in uh, West Garden Grove. So um, I just wanted to say that uh, it sounds like, and I feel there's a conflict between the need for high-density, low-income housing and being able to provide more housing, and th the flip side is the environmental uh, impact on the people that already live there. Uh, we've already talked about water usage, traffic. It's no secret that when you live in a place and they want to pack in a lot more people, you're going to give up something. And you don't have to pack it in so tight, I don't think. And, it, and I, I noticed that uh, laws have changed a lot. Since in 2018, we uh, in California had an environmental law where everybody was to be made aware of uh, how development impacts their life. Sierra Club was on the other side of the fence against development at that time. Now the tables have turned and everybody wants to make the suburbanites dense and then move jobs into the urban environment. It's going to be a battle, as you can see, a legal battle, because I don't think people are going to go for it. There's not enough water. They used to call it future water, and they outlawed that. So uh, anyway, think about it. I think most people are thinking in legal terms right now. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, Council. I want to thank you for allowing us to give you our two cents. My name is Tommy Elmans, and I've lived in Parkwood for about 15 years. I've been in, I grew up in the area, been here my whole life, when this was just orange groves. The, the main thing is that these numbers you were given, so just so everybody knows, you don't have to build there. Those numbers are if you build there, if you find that you need that housing there. Those are the numbers, and those four spot you gave us where starting gate is down here. So I want you to think when you vote, we were going to be happy if you was zoned R2. We'd be really happy if you didn't build at all. But we were trying to be reasonable with the city council that when you do build, not although you've taken this money now, so that means you're going to do it, but you, you don't have to do it. I mean, I don't think you're, are you that hard up for money that you, that you got to do it. And according to the, what I read, 
that that was just a ruling given that when you build, these are the numbers that you need to meet up in those four locations, that being the big one because you want to get the most in there and you won't be able to put that many in the other one, but just think about like, do we have to build right now? Can you wait till maybe we get water, rain, and we, it builds up and it's a time to do it, you know? I, talk, I worked for Edison for 45 years. I know, I already talked to them. This is gonna draw on the electricity that they have to provide out of this substation, or the, right over here on La Salle. So there's all these like other things, the personal things, nobody's even talked about the crime. Police officers know what's jamming people in places are. I've seen it. It brings, it brings with it other things than than Ozzy and Harriet neighborhoods. Yeah. And it's not gonna be that way. And it, like these people, it's, get, it's gonna ruin, you might be sorry that you did this to La Salle. I think you will be, unless you got another plan that, that I don't know about. But housing like that, when it's packed in, people are parking their cars in CPE, because there's no room over there. People crossing the street at night, because they got to go get their car. People over there going to Heather Park because they don't have a park, so these people can't use their park. You're taking the soccer field, you're taking the dog, you know, that's a lot of stuff. Just because of numbers that the state of California said, if you build there, here's what you need to do. They're not telling you you have to do it. You don't. So you, you people are, I think you're pretty intelligent people. So if you think about it, Put yourself in these people's spot. I know you got a job to do too, but like we, we said, city of Los Alamitos, that means you and a lot of, the, a lot of us here too, because we're just the same as you, you know, and we elected you to take care of us. So I hope you think about that when you meet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Dan Brandt. I know some of you actually up here. Um, I work, I usually don't share a lot of personal details, but I'm going to, because it actually makes sense for what I'm gonna say later. Um, I grew up in Los Alamitos. I worked for the city for 23 years, 12 years as a police officer. I actually grew up in the military housing before it got torn down. Um, so I know, I know a lot about Los Alamitos. And the reason I'm gonna say that is because I know about College Park East. I worked hard to come back to this, com I call it the community, because we talk about the school district. We talk about we're all one big community. And I moved to College Park East knowing a couple things about College Park East, is that it was land, kind of landlocked. It's not drivable, it's not bikeable. You're in there, there's no mass transit. If you're going off Lampson, you got your neighborhood, that's what you have, right? It's not like off Catella or Los Alamitos Boulevard where you have three lanes of traffic, okay? So I knew those things were bad. I knew that Lampson Avenue is extremely dangerous. I had responded to many traffic collisions out there. And what I will tell you is, I wanna tell you now before I forget, please, before you vote on any of this, drive out to Lampson, exit out of College Park East, take a look both ways, make a U-turn at Heather, make a U-turn at the different places, so you understand what I'm talking about later. Because I'm gonna give you some stats later. Um, one of the things I wanna say is that tra uh, fatal, fatal traffic collisions. From 2000 to 2019, Lampson, from Sylvie's Boulevard to Manly, 1.5 miles. Six fatal traffic collisions. And that's excluding the freeways. All of Los Alamitos, in that same period, nine. One street, six fatals. And then one of those, one of those collisions in 2008 involved um, a, a child and his mother, he's autistic, was riding on the um, sidewalk, car overturned by DUI driver, killed the mom, he survived. So when I say these numbers, you gotta think about people. We're not just talking about numbers. Just like we're talking about arena numbers, we're talking about units, housing. Six, six fatals is a lot. So you need to go out there and look, look at the street, understand what we're dealing with. Don't just think about the numbers, okay? Also, um, some of the things I wanted to talk about was, I understand that the state and the arena numbers and we have to identify, I looked at both housing elements in Los Alamitos and Still Beach. 
And the Planning Commission, we heard, well, Seal Beach is doing this. Seal Beach is doing the town center, Old Ranch. They want all these different things. Those aren't buildable right now. This one's buildable. A developer has bought this. They want to build it. They want to put 264 units in. That's what they're proposing. I know you don't have a plan yet, but that's what they're proposing. You know, we're, we're tired. We're going to keep going, though. We've been to scoping meetings. We've been to the, the show and tell. Um, I wouldn't even call it a show and tell. I'd call it a sales pitch at the Ayers Hotel. Um, we went to the Planning Commission um, because I'll tell you some of those concerns that we have. You know, there's going to be 250 plus cars parked in Callsburg every single night. You look at the numbers of the, what they've, they've proposed, not enough. And you know what? College Park East is going to go to permit parking. That's what we're going to have to do. So all that's going to do is send it over to Parkwood, or it's going to send it over to West Garden Grove, right? Um, there's no parks in the development. There should be a park. There's no play structure at Arbor Park. So they're all going to come over to Heather. They're going to cross the dangerous street, and they're going to come to Heather Park that's already dilapidated, OK? You're going to have 600 cars in the street. We already talked about it. The people that are committing those, and I didn't even talk about the, the overturned vehicles, the serious collisions. Those are happening all the time. The, those kids are going to have to cross the street over Lampson to get to the Heather Park. Okay, so that's another concern. Um, my thing is, you know, we had 75 people out here at the Planning Commission meeting. We're very passionate about it. And the idea is because we care about our kids and our kids' safety, right? We can't have our kids play in the street. They can't get picked up at the bus at Heather Park when you have 250 cars parked there, people trying to leave to go to work. So we really hope that you guys can think about taking some of that arena number, putting it, find another location. I'm not anti-development. None of us, I think, are anti-development. We're not anti-affordable housing. We're not NIMBY. We just say 264. I know it's not in front of you right now, but that's what they want. They're saying the city wanted 355. They're trying to negotiate that they're the good guys. No, no, we need to get in the hundreds, the mid hundreds max. We need to be the low hundreds because we need parking for that neighborhood. We need to have a, a park. We need to have all those things. So I implore you when you look at these, don't just look at numbers and then we're plotting a map. Please look at it about the people in College Park East, the people in Parkwood. Think about how that's going to impact Lampson, right? And I know we talked about Seal Beach. We're going to be fighting Seal Beach too. When they come into the town center, they come to Old Ranch, right? Because we don't want that development either. So, and you, you're going to have the support here to fight those for those developments. So I hope you don't look at it as Seal Beach, you know, when they took the town center, they didn't care. When they did this, well, I wasn't around when that happened. I hope you can think about this is how it's going to impact this community and all of our community. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I literally just got here right now. I have three kids at home, couldn't find a, a sitter for them because I forgot to put on the calendar that we have a meeting tonight. So my wife decided to go out with her friend. So um, <laughs> I had to find a sitter last minute. So. Still catching my breath, but I want to make sure I came up here to talk. So my name is Dr. Papoulias. I'm actually a professor at California State University, Fullerton. I teach business classes, marketing, real estate. Uh, 41 years old. I've had my real estate license since I was 18. Uh, I worked in commercial real estate, uh, strictly on apartment buildings. Um, so a couple concerns I want to bring up to you. Um, I'm sure you've heard everybody here speak tonight. I just caught the tail end of what uh, Dan said right now. But he brought up some good points about how the community is shaped, what you can do there, and how it can really cause a lot of just congestion trafficked on an already busy and dangerous Lampson Road. As a commercial real estate broker, why I told you my background and why I understand commercial real estate, when you rezone any kind of commercial property to multifamily, you have just increased that property value five, 10, maybe even 15 times. Multifamily is the number one commercial real estate property you can buy, invest in, or sell. When you do this, I can guarantee you, and it's probably not gonna happen tomorrow, but it will happen. Every one of those property owners have now have something on paper that says, I could take my property that's worth maybe five, six, seven million, and now increase how much it is worth. A property owner would almost be naive to say, I would not do that. 
as you all know, when you own commercial real estate, you're always going to try to get your biggest return, your ROI, or in this case, what we would call as a cap, uh, your uh, capital amortization rate. That's where you take the net operating income, you divide it by the sell price. When you buy a $28 million building that is zoned commercial and overpay for what the value is, that was not worth $28 million, especially with the current interest rates, and already have something designed and developed to lay out, to build, and yet it hasn't even been zoned residential yet, that brings a big concern to me as to what's going on behind the scenes that I don't know about. So that was one of the things that I wanted to bring up was putting the cart before the horse, knowing that the horse is coming. Something about that just doesn't sit right with me. So that's one of the things I wanted to bring up was do not think that these will not be developed to their full capacity of what you vote on. I guarantee you they will be. And the unfortunate thing here is the way the cities line up with one another, you might be looking at this, oh, it's on the other side of Los Alamitos. But as the gentleman told you before, we have Old Ranch we're going to be fighting for. We have the, uh, the shops at Rossmore we're going to be fighting for. We are going to be putting a possibility with 400 units at Old Town, um, across the street at Old Ranch, another couple hundred. Here on Lampson, you're talking about putting almost 1,000 units within a one mile radius. I'm not a traffic expert, but I've lived in LA and Orange County long enough to know how traffic works. And I see my light is up, but I'll, I'll leave you at this point here. Please consider what we, what we have as a community here. We love our community, we are for development, but let's try to reduce these sizes and spread them out somehow. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex Sines of um, uh, Seal Beach. And um, I would, um, and I have brought up to the uh, Seal Beach Police Department that Lampson Boulevard, headed eastbound, gets loaded with 75 mile an hour traffic right at the end of happy hour at Spaghettini. I've been asking them, put a motorcycle cop in the median there, and you'll have a couple every day, and which is a big, I'm sure, a big contributor to the accident rate there. Another thing to consider with the um, environmental impact report, that no one, and I don't even think your former city um, manager has in his part of the um, environmental impact report is the increase in the sewage load. Now the re, um, um, repairs to the east sewer feeder project do not include adding any more sewage capacity. All they are doing is relining the existing sewer pipes with a plastic liner to keep them from leaking there is going to be no increase in sewage capacity. That needs to be in the environmental impact report. And as far as the um, um, fair political practices investigation into the um, developers' contributions to political candidates, everyone, everyone here knows that our local newspapers are a lap dog. The only watchdog press around here is the Los Angeles Times, which we are going to have to get involved in looking into the fair political practices records. Thank you. Good evening, Los Alamitos City Council and all who are here tonight. My name is Anaya Ostrich and I live in College Park East of Seal Beach, directly across from the proposed Lampson project. I've lived here since 1988 and my husband Steve since 1979. We have two adult children. Even though the areas around us have changed, one thing remains, which is the lack of safety on Lampson. It is why I'm against the proposed project as it currently stands. Um, please consider 
the speed limits of 45 miles per hour currently, as well as the 40 miles per hour on the curves uh, on Lamson versus how fast people are actually going. Um, I've seen anywhere up to 55, 65. It, it just depends on the time of day, but that's pretty much it. Um, and of course, it's been mentioned that there was six fatalities since the 2000s, and it's in, of course it's going to increase with more drivers. Please remember also, AYSO and the dog park people do need parking. They have it now at West Ed, as they always have, but they of course would lose it if this project is as, as it currently is, so that's something to consider. Um, tonight I'm also concerned about the open walking gates that the architect Alan showed me over at the Ayers Hotel. Um, open gates are not permitted at dusk at Arbor Park. That is at the order of Army Corps of Engineers, I am told. Um, the Arbor Park um, gate at Lamson is always closed at dusk, and it does not open until Seal Beach opens it in the morning, or designated time of day, I'm not sure. Um, please remember the emergency vehicles, and all the vehicles cannot move on Lamson when there is an accident to tend to. They all have to drive through our tract, as we do. And they get to another street and then they get out, which it's like a maze sometimes. Um, that will happen more often again. And it also presents a safety hazard because in the neighborhood there are children, especially on Ironwood, especially at Heather, has been said, um, just everywhere pretty much. Uh, my whole neighborhood is full of young kids now, so I, I get to see them and I always have to watch for them. Uh, in November of this year, we had two major accidents that prevented all of us from entering most of our designated entrances. Um, so that's, that's a lot <laughs> in one month. Uh, also, like, like I said earlier, they had to get out by maneuvering. Um, and sometimes with major uh, accidents, fatalities, it could be two days before we actually can get you know, in on Lamson again. So that's something to consider. Please remember there are no stoplights in this plan. And the reason why is because it's too close to Heather, to the west, and Rose Street to the east. This plan will never be able to have stoplights, and that threatens the safety of our school children at Heather Park, specifically. Please vote no on the current plan. It's a matter of safety for us all. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Justin Osborne. I'm a resident and homeowner of College Park East. Um, I don't have anything written down today. I'm just going to go completely off the heart and just off the top of my head of what I'd like to bring um, that are my concerns for myself and my family. Um, so in 2016, my wife and I moved to College Park East and we're first time home buyers. Our dream was to raise a family here. Um, my wife did go to the Los Alamitos School District. Her mom worked for the school district as well. Um, I moved, I'm a resident or native of Hermosa Beach and you know our plan was to be closer to family um, with our little ones, raise our family um, and, and such. Um, so, so what I'm getting at is you know, I think my angle is please think about the children and the future generations. I think this project is just too massive. It, it creates a lot of, you know, safety hazards for the children that are in the community and for, you know, potential kids that may, you know, if this project does go through, what about those kids and their safety concerns? Um, you have a lot of traffic that is already coming through there. Um, it's just, you know, this was originally zoned for commercial. It just wasn't really thought of as like, you know, a real estate or like a place to live. And I know we have pressure from, you know, Newsom and, and California government to, to create these spaces, but these places just weren't scoped out for that. And, you know, what, what we're going to see is just a lot of, you know, safety concerns for the kids growing up in this area with increased traffic. Um, limited resources with first responders. We know through the labor shortages that you know it's already hard enough, and these resources for these first responders are already depleted. Now you're adding more people to the community. You're 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 putting those people in jeopardy. Um, 
So again, I, like I said, I don't have a script. I don't, I don't really have uh, much planned out here, but my message is just think about the children, think about the future generations. I don't know if you guys are parents, and if you are, think about, you know, if you were in our shoes, raising young families, having a dream of, of owning this house and being in a safe community, and then even the classroom size. Now we're, we're talking about classroom sizes expanding, and then, you know, my wife got to go to Los Alamitos, uh, you know, school district, and it's a great school district, but now you're going to raise class size. So again, I, my, my point is, is just think about, you know, how it impacts the children, the future generations. And if you're a parent yourself, think about how this, you know, would you want your kids being impacted in the same way? Uh, so please uh, take our perspective to heart. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, and congratulations to all those with the certificates, and good evening, neighbors. You've heard, you've heard a lot of people speak. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how city councils or planning departments are ran, but going to the last meeting, some of this is a head scratcher, and I'm hoping that you guys are listening because some things took place at the planning department meeting that has, my head, has me scratching my head and wondering what is going on behind the scenes. So for example, backing up a little bit, the one gentleman here had said, this doesn't necessarily need to happen. We know Newsom is pushing for it. We know there's a need for this. But at the same time, the government has failed the citizens and they're pushing what has happened and entitled the different situations on the citizens to have to just deal with it and fix it and just, just deal with it. There's so many safety issues here. There's so many different things. But one thing I would like to say is that at the planning meeting, we came in to present our positions, our concerns. But you could tell that as soon as we were done speaking, they didn't hesitate to vote to increase the zoning number to three and four. It's like it's apparent that they had already decided before that meeting that this is what they wanted to do, which has you raising the has one raising the question, what's the what's going on behind the scenes? But then I stood back and I thought, follow the money. Newsom's putting out twenty-two billion dollars in California to push this. He's trying to rush it and incentivize it. You can't help but question whose pockets are being filled? Who's listening to the people? We help put you guys here. You have families, I'm sure many of you. May I propose, when you have your meeting to vote, maybe also before you make your final decision, pull in the planning department. But at the same time, please, pull in a handful of our people. Let's hear all sides. It's not just one side. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Trevor Freeman, and I am a resident of West Garden Grove. I grew up in the neighborhood my whole life. And uh, a, a point of view that I think has been missing from this conversation uh, is that as someone who's 27, I can tell you that none of my peers are able to own houses in Southern California, not one. Uh, I think that's a shame, and I think that's because, as we know, demand has outpaced supply for year after year after year. And so I just come to voice my support for the project so that people like me could maybe have the chance of owning a house someday, potentially. Um, we just, we clearly need to build more housing. That's, everyone knows that. You know, and, and like a lot of people have been coming out and saying, um, it's not just a Los Alamitos thing, it's not a Garden Grove thing, it's not a Seal Beach thing, it's a state of California thing. We need more housing. It's just not deniable at this point. Um, another point of view that I, I really want to 
bring up is the safety. Obviously, I think the no left turns is going to definitely be an issue for the people of College Park East. Again, I live you know, not too far away, like a stone's throw uh, from where this project is being developed. And I think the answer to improve safety is not to block all housing, but to improve the safety of Lamson outright. Um, like one of the speakers had mentioned before, um, you know, six people in 20 years have died in this place, and that's without housing, right? So people are dying in this location whether or not housing is built. Lamson is a fundamentally dangerous street. Um, so again, I don't think the solution is to stop the housing. I think it's to improve Lamson uh, on, a, on, a, on a micro scale. Um, you know, 1.5 miles of, of, of road and six uh, deaths is unacceptable. It should be zero. But again, that's not because of housing. It's not because of, you know, West Ed being there. It's because Lamson is, is, is just a dangerous street to begin with. Um, and again, it, it, whether or not housing is going to go there, folks, people are already dying. It's, it's not a matter of, oh, adding more housing is going to increase the deaths because we, we know that people are dying anyway. It's a fundamental safety issue. And again, I just don't think that blocking housing is going to make this area any more safe. We do need to take measures to improve the safety. And I just don't think that stopping new housing is going to make the the roads any more safe. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Tom Borsich. I'm a 29-year resident of College Park East. My wife, uh, who is in the back, Pamela, uh, used to be a soccer coach. Both my kids were part of the AYSO um, system. My granddaughter is currently in that system. Um, I'm a little bit disturbed that the park could actually be taken away from the community. Um, so many things I'd like to mirror, you've heard them all. I agree with many, many of the comments made by so many people here. This is a deja vu for me. My wife and I bought a house, first house, in Belmont Heights. A beautiful craftsman bungalow. Six months later, a builder comes in and bulldozes five houses. Puts up a four-story, 22-unit project. The parking was horrendous. They allotted for roughly one and a half parking spots per unit when we know that there's probably at least two drivers, maybe three in every single unit. The city allowed these projects to go in and literally destroyed, and I really implore you to go and take a look in Belmont Heights. Go in and take a look at Carroll Park. You're going to be creating the same environment in our backyard, not yours, because there's a barrier, the base, and the city allowed this to go on for about five years. These projects went in everywhere. Five years later, roughly, give or take, there was such an uproar, the city came in and the city council reversed that zoning because they realized what a problem they'd created. Sadly, they allowed the neighborhood to get destroyed. Density, no parks, traffic issues. We're the ones that are stuck with that. So I really would appreciate it if you would take heed. There's a lot of people that have been here for a lot of years. We would do the same for you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Smith. I'm a, a Seal Beach resident of CPE. Um, I'd be willing to bet that you guys probably have at least two cars. I, I could be wrong, but I would say that's probably the case. 
Um, with this new development, if we do end up with the rezoning, with the 77 units for the affordable housing, with the 98 parking spots, and how the the one, two, three bedrooms work, it's, it's two people per bedroom plus one. So if you look at the three bedroom, that's up to seven, and that's just allowable. I'm sure there's probably gonna be more because the regulation's probably not gonna be that tight. So if you think about that, where are those people going to park? 98 parking spots for 77 units for up to seven people in the three bedrooms. They're gonna park in our neighborhood, and I live right off of Heather and they're gonna park right there. Now that one gentleman, or two gentlemen ago, talked about like, yeah, those are just fatalities. We're not, what about injuries? Like when, when people are parking and there's an abundance of, uh, of, of, or abundance of people trying to get spots, they're looking for those spots. They're not looking at the, at the road in front of them. They're trying to see what, where I can park. My kids are playing out there and not all things um, can be played in the park, like rollerblading, basketball, Okay, because there's no basketball court at Heather Park. I'm worried about these people looking at for parking spots and my kids are out on the street. Think about that. Like if your kids or you know, your grandchildren, whatever, are out there, I mean, that's a huge safety hazard. Okay, and that, not to mention, I mean, I, I don't wanna beat a dead horse, but like the, the traffic. Um, I have three children. And as you may know, uh, getting ready in the morning is extremely tough, adding uh, you know, 15 minutes, we have to get up earlier, or 20 minutes, whatever it may be, over the course of how long they're in school is, it's, it's a tough, it's a tall order. So I uh, would urge you guys to, to think very closely about um, making the decision to, to rezone. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have anybody else? Okay, at this time we will close uh, public comment and come back to uh, council announcements. Um, Jordan, we'll start with you. Sure. <clears throat> Since we were here last, I have attended um, several OC sanitation meetings um, and the uh, Westcom Communications Board meetings, but uh, I can't say that um, I've enjoyed the the winter wonderland and the many. Excuse me. I'm sorry. We're we're still conducting a meeting here, so if you want to talk, can you please go outside? I'm sorry, but we've got to finish our city business as well. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah. So thank you. Um, as I was saying, the winter wonderland and um, several of the other events that uh, we attended were kind of a highlight. I really enjoy you know how they're well attended, and um, just keep doing a good job. So thanks. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I attended the Winter Wonderland, and again, as always, it was wonderful. I think, was that our best attendance ever? I think I say that every year, though, but um, it, was, uh, it was wonderful walking around, just, you know, thankful. I'm part of the community, uh, and I got to enjoy that with the family. Otherwise, had a, a bunch of travel for work and uh, other obligations, but uh, the Winter Wonderland was wonderful. All right. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, y'all gonna have to excuse me. I am highly allergic to animals, but you saw that beautiful puppy. I had to touch him. <laughs> I had to touch him, but now my face is itching, so don't mind me. If someone has hand sanitizer, I'll take it, but that's my issue. We're, we're working on it. Okay, okay, so you don't think I'm tweaking. I'm allergic to dogs, but he was beautiful. Okay, um, I attended my Mosquito and Vector Committee meetings. I went to a Cynic sale. It was a soft grand opening. I'm actually trying to convince them to join the chamber and have another grand opening in January because the chamber was not there. Super strange, but highly enjoyable. There was no one there to tell me what to do. <laughs> I also went to the Winter Wonderland and it was beautiful because we had every elementary school represented with their choir, right? Almost all, the babies were singing. It was so nice. I love, it, it felt like, I'm gonna say Christmas, holiday. Everyone was happy and there was food trucks and there was the beer and wine garden and it was just such a good time. I had a wonderful time. We had an emergency snow delivery from, who was it that delivered it to us so gracious and beautiful? Snow delivery. Snow delivery, they brought the snow. You were like, we weren't gonna have snow when they brought the snow. Oh. UWS. UWS came through in a clutch. 
Thank you, UWS. I also went to the Sunbirth Youth Academy graduation. This is a um, program that runs out of the Joint Forces Training Base, and some of these babies, it's their last opportunity to gather themselves before they really go off a far end. So it's so great. There's parents, they're crying, and they're so happy, and the babies are so, ex I call them babies, they're like teenagers, but they were so excited. They're like, I did it! You can see the pride, and I love going. Like, I might even try to go and I'm not on council anymore. It's that impactful. And then I went to the Americana kickoff, and that was, um, I don't know, there was some tear-jerking testimonies in there from these young people, of course, because you know they're fundraising, but some of their stories were just amazing. It made me want to open my wallet. You know, normally people are fundraising and it's like, I'll give you $20. But their stories were actually, you could see the difference that college was making for them. And then um, somehow I got RSVP for the holiday breakfast celebration, so I showed up. It was a chamber breakfast over at Rush Park. That was great because the high school choir performed. And they are so amazing. Like, they're so good now. I think the choir director walked away and had one of the young people directing them. So they are spectacular. And then I went to a holiday mixer. It was a 15-year celebration for Printmasters. They've been in, law, in business for 15 years. And, I, and then Roadrunner Spirits was offering tastings. I did not partake because I was on the clock. And uh, Marina Skin Care was inviting people in and doing skin consultations and all of that. And I'm always happy to go into the little, our little pocket, what do you call them? complexes where all of our businesses are and just get to know who people are and what they've been doing and hear their stories of how they're growing and how they love Los Alamitos. So that's what I've been up to. Yes, thank you. Please hand sanitizer. <laughs> we don't need her swelling up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, just real quick. Um, I did attend Winter Wonderland. As always, it was awesome. I still don't know how we packed that many people into those streets. Um, I got my two dozen tamales, which is always a tr Christmas tradition in our house. Um, Santa was delivered by OCFA via fire truck, which was absolutely awesome. Uh, the foundation worked the beer and wine minus wine plus adult cocktails garden. Um, and it worked fabulously. Um, our adults enjoy their adult beverages. Uh, we had a great time, raised money for a canine. No, I, okay. Um, and, anyway, so, and I do want to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem for attending the Americana kickoff. I was not able to, to be there, but we were well represented. Um, our Americana awardee is Nisi Stewart, um, who's chair of our um, chamber, LaSalle Chamber, and also owner of our small business printmasters. Um, she just does an amazing job, and her story is one that just goes beyond. So we were very proud to um, represent in there. And I think that's it for me. Um, so we'll move on to items from the city manager. None at this time, Mayor. Absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> Director Noda, how was Winter Wonderland? Can you give us some numbers? Um, like. Good evening, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the City Council. Um, like Councilmember Chirko said, it was our uh, highest attended event with um, anywhere between 7,000 to 7,500 representatives from the community. Great, and everybody just had a great time, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will move on to warrants. Um, anybody have any questions? All right, can I get a motion? I'll, I'll make, move. I'll second it. All right, roll call vote, please. Uh, I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Doby, seconded by Council Member Cherko. Mayor Hasselbrink? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Doby? Yes. Council Member Cherko? Yes. Council Member Murphy? Absent. Council Member Nafolda? Yes. All right, now we move on to consent calendar. All consent calendar items may be acted upon by one motion unless a council member requests separate action on a specific item. Um, do I have anybody wanting to pull anything? I can go. I'll make a motion to move the uh, consent calendar. Second. I'm running out of opportunities to I make know, motions. Is this, is this so. going yeah. to be your last motion? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to make all the motions from here on out. Yeah. You you can pull A it? through F. If no, you that's like, okay. <laughs> just to extend up here. That's all right. That's okay. All right. Uh, so we have a motion. A second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All righty. Okay. We've got a couple of discussion um, item 
items. Uh, first is the adoption of vehicles mile traveled thresholds of significance. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll ask Director Noda to step in if I miss anything, but this is largely another tool that cities can use to evaluate projects. Um, over time, over the past couple of years, the state and then our local uh, planning transportation agency, the OCTA, have adopted this standard and it's a way of actually really counting where exactly the miles are coming in and out of projects. Um, we won't be abandoning the way that we currently um, look at those projects, but this gives us yet another way to look at those projects just by adopting this locally. But it is a standard throughout California and uh, Orange County. All right, anybody have any comments up here for that? I'll make a motion to approve. You. <laughs> I'll second. Jordan, you want to second? I'll second. There you go. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and item B, resolution number 2022-38, Awarding the city manager a performance-based incentive bonus for calendar year 2022. Th thank you. Oh, I yeah, I'm that. looking at you. What do you think? <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> city attorney. So this item has been brought before the council because it pertains to executive compensation. Uh, pursuant to the city manager's employment agreement, at the closing of each calendar year, the city council may opt to award up to a 2% uh, discretionary uh, performance bonus to the city manager. This year, 2% uh, of the base salary earned by the city manager uh, uh, totals $4,281. So the council at its election may opt to award at that amount or a lesser amount if they so choose. Okay. Any discussion? Y yes. Um, I just, you know, since it's my last meeting, I'm feeling a little bit sentimental, but um, I do want to say that, you know, obviously this is a well deserved. Um, bonus part of your compensation uh, but one of the things I'm most proud of from my time on the City Council is when uh, Mayor Hasselbrink and I served on the ad hoc committee to find a new city manager and we found you and uh, as we always talk about the city is very fortunate to have you Chet so great job All right. any other comments yeah, I echo that. I, I'm not, I don't cease to be amazed at what you were able to accomplish. The fact that I know you're not blowing smoke. If you don't know the answer, you'll say, stick a pin in that, I'll get back to you. You won't blow sunshine. I appreciate that. I just hope that our residents, there's some way that we can convey to them to help them understand what a tremendous asset that you are. And just from a human resource perspective, because that's my background, when you've got good people, they are so incredibly difficult to find right now. You better hold on for dear life. So this is us holding on. Yes. <laughs> and I do want to echo this as well. Um, you know, a couple of things. I know for a fact we could have never gotten the sales tax increase past um, that takes a certain kind of crazy to go in and do that and um, you were out there with everybody else um, explaining the importance of it um, your hiring capabilities uh, by our police chief right here couldn't have gone any better than that so um, kudos to you for kudos to him um, and I'm excited for the next phase of the economic development because I know that is your wheelhouse from your previous city and I'm really looking forward to, to what you're going to be able to do here in Los Al. So we are being well served by our city manager and I think this is absolutely well deserved. I agree. I agree with what everybody said here. Just keep it up. Right. He felt like he had to say something. <laughs> That's okay. He's buckling to peer pressure. That's all right. All right. And with that, I will make a motion. Oh. You got a second? I'll second. I'll second it. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. <coughs> now we're going to special order this a day. Shall we sit up here? And, yeah, let's sit up here and do this. Um, first, comments by outgoing council member Mark A. Churko. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for, for uh, allowing me to speak. This will not be brief. I know most people <laughs> say that they are going to be brief. No, it, it won't take too long. But, um, you know, it's been five years since I was first appointed to the city council. A lot has changed in our world since that time. Um, and a lot has changed in our city. But, but as far as our city goes, a lot has changed mostly for the better in my opinion and that's as a result of the collaboration among the city staff who I always acknowledge do the do the really hard work and the true work of the city uh, although we oftentimes um, get the glory for it but um, the city has done done a lot of wonderful things um, in my time on the city council so I'll talk about that in a minute but 
first I want to say um, thank you to uh, staff and, uh, and my colleagues on the City Council. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with all of you. Um, we've had some disagreements, but uh, we've gotten past those. We've always been able to move forward in the best uh, interests of the city. Uh, I consider many of you friends, even Shelley. Um, <clears throat> one of the most painful parts of leaving the city council, um, you know, the work can be stressful sometimes. Sometimes we're faced with really difficult decisions and it's hard, especially for someone like me who's a people pleaser. I want to make everybody happy. And in this position, you really can't make everybody happy. You just try to do the best that you can. Um, but one of the, <clears throat> one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most painful parts um, of leaving the city council is, uh, you know, I genuinely like all the people uh, that I've been working with over the last few years. So, I think Richard cried when he left the city council. Yes, so yes. I'm tearing up. I'm not yet at the crying part. So, we, oh yeah, Richard was <laughs> Richard was here a few minutes ago. Richard Murphy, our former mayor uh, and council member, was here, but. Um, thank you to staff for my for patience when I was new and answering all of my uh, questions. And now that I'm not new, thank you for your patience in laughing at my dad jokes. Um, my kids my kids told me I have to tell a couple of dad jokes, so I'll be real quick with those. Uh, what's orange and sounds like a parrot? Carrot. They're back. Mm. My kids are back there. So. <laughs> yeah, I can hear what, their eyes what, rolling. What did the Los Alamitos police officer say to his belly button? You're under a vest. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> actually, we were talking about Wonder, Winter Wonderland. One of my favorite memories was at Winter Wonderland in 2019, I think. And there was some dead time, I think, before we were lighting the tree. And so I, mm. I, had, a, a, <laughs> I had a few dad jokes, and I was telling them. They were Christmas-themed dad jokes. And one of the kids in choir, he was probably like eight years old, he leans over and he goes, these are terrible. <laughs> and I was so proud. It was, um, it was the first time the mayor got booed off the stage. I, I wasn't mayor yet. I wasn't mayor yet. <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you also to the residents and businesses for allowing me the honor of representing this fine city. Another favorite memory of mine is, is uh, during my time on the council is uh, 4th of July 2021. Just walking around at the base. Just beautiful day. You know, music, uh, patriotic music playing. Uh, you know, I, I was walking around thinking, I, I'm, how did I get to live in this awesome uh, area, this awesome community? And, um, and I remember, oh, I'm also the mayor. That's cool, too. <laughs> so uh, it's been an absolute honor uh, representing uh, the residents for these past five years. And a special thanks to my entire family, uh, my very supportive parents who encouraged me. They helped a lot with watching kids when I had meetings. Uh, they were going to be here, but I told them there was a big crowd. Um, they thought it was for me. I told them it was not for me. Um, uh, to my in-laws also for, for also helping out with a lot of babysitting. Um, and of course, to my wife, Shanna, and my sons, Anthony and Luca, who are in the back. Um, they dealt with me being away from meetings and events, and they came to a lot of events. I've dragged the kids to many meetings over the years. Um, and um, you know we'll still be attending those meetings, of course, uh, or not the meetings, but the but yeah. the city <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, during the last election, or during the election in 2018, it, I found it funny. My kids were smaller, and they they still thought. Hopefully, they still think a little bit that their dad was awesome. They couldn't imagine anybody voting for anybody but their dad. You know, um, they've always been very supportive. But my kids have said uh, to me that they're happy. I'll have a little bit extra time and a little extra attention for them. So. Obviously, that's the most important thing. Um, despite all the challenges to local governments over the last few years, we were able to achieve an incredible number of successes, uh, in large part thanks to our city staff and also the productive relationships that we've had on the council. Uh, some of the things I'm most proud of uh, include, obviously, our pension pay down plan. That's one that uh, I was really focused on for a, lot, a long time, and, and Chet and Craig and Shelley. And the whole council really um, indulged me on that, and uh, we, we got that done. So we went from having uh, dire financial straits to really being in a really positive uh, future financial outlook. Uh, we had a balanced budget all five years, uh, thanks in no small part to uh, Mayor Hasselbrink's work on the uh, Budget Standing Committee. We restaffed our police department. We finalized new contracts for city employees. Um, when I was mayor, we were able to approve a new trash hauler contract, which saved our residents and businesses more than $12 million. Uh, we supported the creation of a veteran cemetery in Orange County. 
Uh, we implemented the Los Al Bucks program, which is the envy of many other communities. Um, make sure you use your Los Al Bucks before uh, the deadline next month, I believe. Is that right, Ron? Okay. Um, we uh, added license plate readers at various points in the cities to increase public safety. We contributed to the award-winning Buena Park Navigation Center, which has helped hundreds of people experiencing homelessness uh, move into transitional housing. We added many wonderful members to our city. Again, our great city manager, our police chief, Craig, so many others uh, as well. And most importantly, we re restored faith um, in our residents that local government can achieve incredible things if they act selflessly, rationally, and together in the best interests of the community. Um, the community is wonderful in so many ways. You know, I, I remember when I uh, first interviewed for the council, I said, I wasn't born in Los Alamitos, but I got here as quickly as I could. Um, and now I can't imagine living anywhere else. Um, and it's important to remember that we all play a part of this. I know a lot of the speakers, both from Seal Beach and Los Alamitos, talked today about um, the sense of community that we have and that we're all neighbors, um, and that's so true. But, but I do think it's important, you know, even as I'm leaving the council, um, and I tell some of my neighbors this as well, we all play a part in that sense of community that we feel, whether it's neighbors and residents, you know, helping each other out or just being kind to each other. Uh, it's the nonprofits, the community volunteers that give back to the community. Um, the the uh, business community that also gives back, that employs people, that serves as gathering places. They feed us, both phys actually feeding us and, uh, and otherwise uh, it's our public safety and first responders who not only do their job of keeping us safe, but also contribute to our sense of community. When your police officers, our police officers are driving through the neighborhood and stop and talk to people, it's just wonderful. We're so lucky to have our own police department here. Um, and of course, our local government, all of us here, uh, serve a vital role in, uh, of a well-functioning and selfless local government. Uh, we've been able over the years to function amicably and productively, always taking the business of governing very seriously, but not taking ourselves too seriously. So um, I'm very proud of all those achievements, but uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll keep in touch. Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna do. Should we do some presentations from there? Sure. Yeah, come on down. Sure. Let's come on down. All right. It's a photo op. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. So we've got a. Is this on? Is that on? There we go. No, you can't peek. You can't peek. Sorry. So this is the time we have to be nice to you. Just a couple minutes. After five years of torture. I know. After five years of torture. No, it's been a pleasure um, working with you. Um, I know when you first interviewed here, you were like, ah, I'm not so sure. I'm like, trust me, you'll love it. Um, working with you on budget and finance has just been amazing. Um, we argue and then we shake hands and we always do what's best for the city um, despite our own personal preferences. Um, so I'm looking forward to you being able to spend time with your wife and kids. Um, I'm looking forward to Michigan State beating UCLA in the new Big Ten. Um, that's going to be all good. And I did have a couple parting go gifts for you. Uh, these was special request by your children. This is the 2023 Bad Dad Jokes calendar joke of the day. So you've got 365 new jokes. And then I also figured he's going to have a little bit of time on his hands because Shanna runs a very successful dental practice here in Los Al, so he's going to be home taking care of the kids and stuff. So I gave him a lawyer adult coloring book. <laughs> so he'll be able to color when he needs to and um, spend time with his friends. But seriously, um, I, it's just I'm going to miss you. Might have to pop in the house every so often so you can just beat up on me a little bit. Um, and that's all good. And I'm going to let my colleagues also speak. I'm going to give it to Jordan first. <laughs> yeah, thanks again, Mark. Um, I've said this before many times, but you were the one that just kind of brought me in to you know, participate in the commission. And then when the seat opened up uh, for District 3, you strongly encouraged me. So I really, really appreciate that. 
you always seem to be just in a good mood and, and, and you know, sometimes we come here, it's tiring and you kind of just bring us up. So thank you for that. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. Thanks to your family. Thank you. You want to take this? Oh, Mr. Cherko, we were on Parks and Recs Commission together. One thing I've always appreciated about you is that you're, you really strive to be even. Like even when you were mayor, and I won't forget that because most people think, oh, the mayor, you can just come and do what you want. But you would say, okay, so guys, here's what I'm thinking, but what are your thoughts? And you would listen. And then we would come to an agreement. And that really impacted me. That's the, way I, that's the reason I stayed. Because it's like, I can't get in no mess. I ain't got time for the drama but you made it very pleasant, and that's rare. And then when you go to other cities, what we have here, other cities do not have it. Y'all just need to know. I'm not gonna tell you to go to other cities because that's their business, but we have it very good here. We have a very good council. We have excellent staff. We got some good people, and you've been a significant part of that. But you know who was a bigger part? Mrs. Cherko. So <laughs> I got something for her. She is the most gracious woman. <laughs> Typically, when you see her, she's the one always smiling. She brings the children. You don't know if she wants to be there. They could have been fighting in the car on the way there. You would never know. She, Hi, how are you? How are your children? Everything looks so great. So I honor you this evening. Thank you for sharing your husband. Thank you for sharing and opening your marriage. Thank you for being willing to allow us to see him shine. Thank you. This for you. Don't let him have it. But I'll hand it to you for So we would like to present you with a couple things. First, the coveted Los Alamitos tile. You always get this on your way out, not on your way in. Um, and then also, um, that's going to go on the corner of your house. That's cool. <laughs> we have Mark Cherko Way. So if ever your kids get out of hand saying, hey, I've got a street named after me. That's all good. But honestly, um, we just so appreciate everything you've done. Um, you just love the city. You can tell. Uh, you love your residents. Uh, you can tell. And um, probably the last time I'm going to be nice to you, but it's all good. So Chet, did you want to? I learned a long time ago not to try to go after you and Tanya, but uh, <laughs> I, I did want to say just very briefly, uh, sir, that it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, I don't think I've ever met a council member nice, as nice as you, and I think that I always joked with you that you got to be mayor during a very difficult time, and uh, the things that you did for this city, especially in a time when there wasn't a lot of knowledge of what exactly needed to be done, was incredibly impressive. So I just want to say thank you for that. All right. Um, can we bring the Churko family up here for some photo ops? Oh, you thought you were going to get out of that, really? Come on, you got your hair all did and everything. Right, Come right. on up. You feathered your bags for a reason. <laughs> Come on, Roka. Roka. <laughs> Come on. And the boys are going to have to smile. She said that. She said, do I have to do my hair? I said, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Could that have been a whole other fight? I'm not careful of your hair, but you're taking the picture. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Awesome, thank you. All right, now I get to say a couple words as the outgoing mayor. Um, you, you know this year has been phenomenal. Um, I love this city so much. Uh, one of my goals when I first came into office in 2014 was I wanted to make sure that Los Alamitos was the city that my future grandchildren would live in. Um, I've got part of that going. I don't have the grandchildren, but uh, both my boys went away to college and now they're both back. Um, my oldest son is a veterinarian here in La Salle and he happens to live next door to us. 
which is really cool. Um, and my other son is back in the county at least. So uh, mission accomplished, they both have the desire to live here. And that says something for everybody that's involved with our city that, because it's not about the housing prices. Uh, you pay a premium to live here and um, it's just a great place to grow up um, and have children and raise families. Uh, we got a lot of stuff done this year. Uh, the pension pay down was huge. Uh, there are cities that will be on the verge of bankruptcy if they don't address their pension pay down pretty soon. We have that addressed with a start and a finish line for 12 years, which is spectacular, while still being able to balance the budget and still pour money into the city to make sure that our parks are good and our streets are good and residents get lost out bucks. So um, okay. that was great. The sales tax initiative was awesome. Um, it really gave us the umph we needed to get to a full complement for our police department to be able to redo some of the infrastructure, uh, some of the programs you're seeing are because of that sales tax. Um, we made some uh, pretty strict promises of what we would do with that money, and I'm very confident that we've fulfilled or on our way to fulfilling every one of those. Um, I've seen other cities, when they pass sales tax increase, um, money was spent a little different. Um, but I think I, I can look at any resident here in the city and say we did exactly what we promised we would do, and I'm very proud of that. Um, we got a new trash contract, and it wasn't with the incumbent, and we didn't get sued, so that's huge. <laughs> um, trash is a really dirty business, pardon the pun, but it is, and we got the best deal that um, any city has. Uh, the service has been spectacular. Um, I was doubtful at the beginning of it, and they have proven me wrong over and over again, so I'm proud to say that um, you know, the city's, a, the city's in good hands. Um, I'm looking forward to my next four years here um, with these amazing colleagues, minus Mark, but we'll keep them intact. Welcome to the Planning Commission, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just, like I say, I just love this city. Um, the staff is spectacular. Um, every single one of them feels that this is their city and they respond accordingly. Um, the council up here, you know, regardless of our political views or differing of opinions, it all comes back to what's the best for our city. Um, and every single time it comes back to we did the best for our city regardless of how we feel. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud to be part of this team and continue to be on this team. Oh, thank you very much. Bien, bien. All right. Oh, no way. Okay. Hmm. On behalf of the city of Los Alamitos, I would like to present to you thank your you. gavel. My, my hammer. Thank you very much. And with that, um, wait, don't we get a chance to say nice things about you now? Do you have any? <laughs> no, I'm good. No, no I, yeah, yeah, real quick. I mean, you, you did a, uh, an excellent job as mayor. No surprise. When I, when I first uh, interviewed, you were mayor. Um, and now as I leave your mayor, um, you've been a, a consistent, uh, uh, presence on the council the entire time. Thank goodness for our residents and for our council and for our staff. Um, you know, we, like you said, we had some disagreements when we were on the budget standing committee to matter together, but like my wife, you knew if we had disagreements, I was probably the right one. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the complete opposite is true actually. Um, but I just want to say you did a, you did an excellent job and you should be very proud, um, of, of your tenure as mayor. Thank so, you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. All right. Now can we move on to... The oath of office. So part of tonight's uh, meeting, the council certified the elections from the November 8th council, uh, I'm sorry, election, and tonight we will be swearing in our newly elected, and we'll do it in alphabetical order. They could have Ms. Hasselbrink join me. Yep. 
I, Shelley Hasselbrink, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties on which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hasselbrink was appointed to our District 4 representative, and then we had an election for our District 5 representative. Ms. Emily Hibbard joined me. Thank you. Can you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, state your name. I, Emily Hibbard. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Thank you. At this time, we'll take a brief rest, recess, help yourself to re some refreshments, and we'll come back in about 10 minutes. That's for her. I, can get yeah. I think she has a copy, actually. You think so?
Um, and I'm going to turn this over to our city clerk. Thank you. Well, welcome to the dais, Councilmember Emily Hibbard. And we will be doing the city council reorganization. So our charter does require that roll call votes be taken for each nomination. Um, nominations are taken in the order received and they do not require a second. So at this time, I'll open the floor for nominations for the office of mayor. Are there any nominations for the office of mayor? Yeah, I'd like to nominate council member Doby. Are there any other nominations? There being no further nominations, nominations are now closed. We're voting for Council Member Tanya Doby for the Office of Mayor. Roll call. Council Member Doby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Hasselbrink. Yes. Council Member Hibbard. Yes. Council Member Nafolda. Yes. Motion carried. Congratulations, Mayor Doby. And I will now turn the meeting over to you to conduct the nominations for the Office of Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Um, or I can do it for you. Please. Your, and I, <laughs> <laughs> so we will now conduct the nominations for Office of Mayor Pro Tem. It um, will be the same process in order as received. Are there any nominations for the Office of Mayor Pro Tem? I would like to nominate Council Member Nafolda. Are there any other nominations? There being no further nominations, nominations are closed. Please vote for Council Member Nafolda for the Office of Mayor Pro Tem. We have Mayor Doby. Yes. Council Member Hasselbrink. Yes. Council Member Hibbard. Yes. Council Member Nafolda. Yes. Motion carried. Congratulations, Mayor Pro Tem Nafolda. And I will now turn it over to you for item 14B. It's your meeting, honey. You got oh. <laughs> All righty. So item 14B is city council member appointments, reappointments as representatives to other agencies and city committees for 2023. Um, there was a recommendation. Basically, do I need to read all this? You don't. You can ask for a staff report or you can summarize yourself. Oh, staff report. Yes, y'all speak so much better on these things than I do. So I'm going to let the uh, city clerk take this one, except <laughs> to say that <clears throat> a number of the outside uh, agencies in which the council member serves on, um, they've had a significant amount of turnover in this last election cycle, either from people leaving office or being termed out. And they've asked whenever possible if we can return the same member to that board in the interest of not losing all members and the institutional knowledge that goes along with it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The city manager Simmons stole the most important part. Uh, this is our annual appointments. Um, as he mentioned, they would like to see the incumbents return. The most noticeable th notable thing is the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control Board um, that was appointed to Mayor Doby, and her term will not end until January 2024, so there's no need to appoint on that one as of today. Uh, Orange County Fire Authority does not allow for alternates, so there will just be a designate, designate there. And then um, for city commissions, we have the Budget Standing Committee and the um, just the Budget Standing Committee. New this year, we have added the Los Alamitos Community Foundation to the appointments. And if it pleases the mayor, we can just go uh, in a order of the list of our council representatives to other agencies and ad hoc committees. Yeah, and I just want to clarify, basically, we're tr the different agencies have asked, I'm mostly speaking to you, new friend. They've asked that the people that are in the seats stay in them because they're in the midst of finishing up business for whatever reason. So their people either lost elections, did not come back, or turned out. So we're going to be gracious and say, okay, whoever's in the seat, we'll let them stay in the seat. Does that make sense? Because <coughs> yeah, at first I was like, what do you mean? I want to go to fire authority. I want firefighters. <laughs> but they have a lot of business that they're trying to like, uh, what is it? Um, contracts yeah we've got the union um, yes. we also lost nine board members due to being termed out or losing elections yeah. or like Trita who was here he was on fire 30 he's now in assembly so those nine people have been around for a while so they're just really nervous about just losing everybody and all the it's a very large board and that institutional knowledge is pretty important so that's why we said we would okay we can extend you that grace and let whoever's in the seat stay in the seat mm -hmm. but I got a seat for you 
if you want it. What, what do you have? So listen, <laughs> I'm the type of person, I will never ask you to do something and not tell you what it is, okay? <laughs> it's the Library Advisory Committee. Um, that's basically 26 members, 24 council members, and I think the, it's a two-year term. There's no compensation. Some people are interested in that. They meet three times a year, and they act in an advisory capacity for the OC public libraries. So what you think? It'd be a pleasure. Awesome. <laughs> all right, so is there a way to just move all of the seats? So I'll go ahead so and one read one. them out one um, one? Okay. for the record, and then okay. you will have, you can make a motion and a second to move the slate for outside representatives. Okay. And then you will need to do it for the budget standing committee. That'll be a separate motion. Okay. okay so we have, so we have the city selection meeting. The delegate is uh, typically the mayor, so we'll do Council Mayor Doby, and the alternate is our Mayor Pro Tem, so it'll be Nafolda. Okay. The League of California Cities is the same thing. The Los Alamitos Community Foundation. Uh, currently, it is uh, Council Member Hasselbrink and former Council Member Cherko, so we will. I'd like to do Trish Murphy because she was our designate for her district, and so she's already got months into it, so I'd like to just move her into the council. Okay. So for Los Alamitos Community Foundation, we have Council Member Hasselbrink and Council Member Murphy. For Orange County Fire Authority, Council Member Hasselbrink. For Orange County Library Advisory, we have a delegate, um, Emily Hibbard, and do we have an alternate for that one? Currently, it, the alternate is Jordan, or Council Member. Oh, I told Trish that. You told Trish? Yes, I did. Okay, so for Library Advisory Board, we have Council Member Hibbard and Council Member Murphy. Orange County, Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control remains at Mayor Doby. Orange County Sanitation District, we have the delegate as uh, Mayor Pro Tem Nafolda, and then we'll need an alternate. Would you like to be alternate? Okay. okay. I have Council Member Hibbard as the alternate. And then Westcom, we have um, Mayor Pro Tem Nofolda, and we'll need a new alternate. Um, anyone want to be alternate? I'll do the alternate. Okay. okay. Thank you. And with it, that, that is our slate for the uh, representatives to other agencies. We need a motion and a second. I'll move it. Second. And then all in favor? Aye. 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 And then the last one is the Budget Standing Committee. That is a city committee that meets on an as-needed basis. Right now it is uh, Council Member Hasselbrink and the alternate space is open. Okay, I would like to be the alternate for that, actually. You're not the alternate, the second member. That's yeah. correct. You have to I'm go to meetings. Using the verbiage that uh, I know. To me. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Budget Standing Committee will be uh, Council Member Hasselbrink and Mayor Doby. A motion and a second. I'll make a motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that concludes item 12, uh, 14B. Okay. And that's it, right? One, two, three, four. And the last thing is, uh, don't laugh at me. This is my first time seeing this document. All You're right, good to go. go. All righty. Uh, with that, we will adjourn. Yay! Just one point of order. Okay, we see, listen. <laughs> we will adjourn to Monday, January 23rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. Yes, because we had to move it because some of us are going to the late conference. To I'll the just be conference. here. Yes. Okay, you uh, yourself. Trish. Oh, yeah. 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 individual in the audience may come forward to speak about any item described on the agenda prior to the council's consideration of that item. Pursuant to the Brown Act, uh, section 54954.3b, remarks are limited to uh, items described in the notice for the meeting. Remarks are to be limited to not more than three minutes per speaker. Do you have any oral communications?
All right, shy group here. Okay, so special for this day, we're gonna be doing interviews and appointments for three of our city commissions. Um, we'll go uh, commission by commission. So the first one we'll be doing is Park and Rec um, Commission. And there are, we have three interviews. So we'll go ahead and we'll start just going in alphabetical order for Wendy Cope. Hey, how are you? Um, just a little bit of background on yourself. Uh, what area do you live in? How long you've been here? Just a little bit of background. Um, I live in Los Alamitos. I live on Howard. Okay. Um, I've been here for May will be five years. Okay. Uh, what special traits, characteristics, or experience do you bring to the commission? Well, I was, you know, I'm a mom. My kids are grown now. So I, as far as like the community and the um, doing things within the community I know a lot about it I homeschooled all my kids and I used all the um, the different things in the community to do that at the time um, so I know kind of what what's out there what's needed from a mom's perspective um, plus I've been, been involved in the different classes and stuff myself here okay great um, why do you want to serve on the Commission because I, I, I really like Los Alamitos and I want to get more involved within the community and kind of make this my home. Um, and I want to get to know my community better. Okay, great. Um, what do you think um, are the most significant issues facing the Park and Rec Commission? Well, I would have to say as probably with anywhere, it would be finances. Um, you know, you need money to do anything. And so in order to put on things in the community, you know, it costs. So I, I would think that would be the biggest thing. Also within Los Alamitos, I would think it, it would be parking because I, I just know from where I live, whenever stuff is held within the parks, we have a parking problem. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my second thing would be a biggest concern. Okay. Um, in your own words, what do you feel is the role of the Park and Rec Commission? Um, I think that it, we kind of would be a liaison within the community to get to know the community and bring it back to city council, things that need to be discussed to make our community better. Okay. And um, in considering the actions of the commission, are you able to set yourself aside from your personal interests versus what's best for the city or the overall good? Absolutely. I'm a nurse, so I have to do that all the time. There you go. Um, you know, you you can look at it as, you know, you have your own point of views of things, but they, everybody else has their own point of views as well. And, you know, they they deserve equal rights as you. Great. All right, anything else? That's all. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, and next we have John Duff. Good afternoon. Hi. <clears throat> Um, you've already had a sneak preview to the questions, so uh, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I've lived here for about nine years. I've got uh, two daughters, one in high school currently and one about two years out of high school. They've both gone through the Los Al district. Um, we did have to move away for a couple of years um, due to some um, change in job and stuff, but uh, we've been here most of the time. Okay. Uh, what special traits, characteristics, or experience do you bring to the commission? So I don't have experience in this type of thing, but um, I'm analytically minded. Um, I'm extremely organized, and I do value um, collaborative le leadership. Uh, I also believe that um, uh, being aware of our biases is, is essential to a position like this where fairness is essential. Okay. Um, and why do you want to serve on the commission? Um, well, I believe effective citizenship requires uh, community involvement. So I think being involved in the community is my way of giving back and being an effective citizen. Okay. And what do you think is the most or are the most significant issues in the park and rec? I don't know that I know of any issues per se, but um, I do believe that uh, safety and fairness, you know, in, the, in our parks, I mean, sorry, safety and uh, cleanliness in our parks is essential. Um, our um, recreational programs and activities 
um, should match the interests of the community. Um, the arts should be uh, celebrated and, and uh, respected as uh, cultural and creative outlets. Great. And in your own words, what do you feel is the role of the Park and Rec Commission? Um, well, I, I believe we're, we're peers of the community and um, the role would be to, uh, I suppose, evaluate and advise the, um, the, city, uh, the city council and uh, anything pertaining to the parks, recreation, and arts. And um, I guess just anything that's in the best interest of our community. Okay. And when considering actions by the commission, how do you balance the best interest of the entire community against your own likes or dislikes? Well, that one's, uh, so in order to maintain objectivity, I think the best way to, to do that is to balance the actions of the committee against the um, values and um, the overall values of the community. So in other words, we all have common values. You know, we, we all want clean and safe parks. We all want... Uh, safe recreation um, we all I think value uh, um, mutual respect you know and I'm sure we could come up with many others that we all the shared values so I think um, by uh, as long as we keep those values front and center uh, we can you know the city or the the um, commission can never really make any uh, self-serving decisions. Okay. Great. Anything else from you? Uh, no, not at the moment. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And next is Joseph Hasty. Come on up. Hi, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Great, um, I live over in the Carrier Row area. Um, I, with my wife, and uh, we have two grown children. They're both out of the house now, but um, I moved to the area in 1976. Uh, so I've been here, uh, went through all the schools, went through all the um, programs here at Los Al. Um, even had Mayor Ken Parker as a rec leader, you know, back wow. in the day, so been here a while. Wow, um, what special traits, characteristics, or experience do you bring to the commission? So I am uh, a general contractor. Um, I've been a general contractor for well over um, close to 30 years, but I am also currently a, um, the maintenance operations and facilities director at the Fountain Valley School District. I've done that for 20 years. Um, I feel like that allows me to offer a unique perspective and in input into planning, uh, logistics, and impact of new and existing services in the city. And why do you want to serve on the commission? Well, my wife and I are planning to retire in the next few years. Um, and to be honest, we've begun exploring possibilities of moving out of California uh, due to the, 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 the current state of our, our government right now and state level. Uh, we find that Los Al to be the exception to that. Um, we are very happy with the core values and the direction that the city has been going in and is going in. Um, we've made this our home for a very long time. So I'd like to volunteer and get involved to help keep it that way and to see that the um, special services and events continue um, and then also and expand. Great. And what do you think are the most significant issues facing the commission? I think from my experience uh, as a resident, a parent, youth coach, high school coach, um, most of my interactions with Park and Rec have been, uh, you know, with the actual parks and the, and the events and things like that. Um, I can see that uh, you know, Los Al has always done an excellent job in that re regards. However, with the changing times, I really see the balancing of the fiscal impacts upon the city uh, with the needs and wants of the larger Los Al community as um, becoming, uh, be becoming to be challenging. Okay. And in your own words, what do you feel is the role of the commission? Um, I think serving on, a, on the uh, Parks and Recs um, as a commissioner, you represent all of the residents of Los Alamitos, uh, but then you're tasked with receiving reports from staff, uh, you know, reviewing and discussing those reports, 
and then making you know recommendations as a group for consideration from the council and um, when considering actions by the commission, how do you balance the best interest of the entire community against the dislikes and likes of yours? So that's fun. Uh, the community outreach import support from all um, is important when making decisions in the community. Um, I like to think that I address decisions in a pragmatic, common sense uh, approach. I think I also look for, um, when making any decisions, I look for unintended consequences of decisions so that we make sure that it's the be most benefit the residents and the city. And I think by doing that before making any kind of decision or vote, um, I think that helps uh, to have that as um, it equips me to answer to people that may disagree with that opinion or my opinion. I think I can also do those things regardless of my opinion on, an, on, an, on a um, certain subject. I'm able to pragmatically and common sense take that issue and make the right decision for all. Great. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank All you. right. Thank you so much. Okay. And Wendy, at this time, we're going to, are we going to do them all? Okay. Okay. So now we're going to do the um, personnel appeals. Do we just have one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought there were two. Uh, Lisa Tocolian, come on up. The competition's tough, but we want to get to know you anyway. <laughs> There is sure one. It is. Uh, the incumbent. Oh, the incumbent. Yeah, That's right. so there are two. Okay. Um, so go ahead and sell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I moved to Los Alamitos uh, 18 months ago. I was living in Seal Beach for five years, and the uh, only thing I knew about Los Alamitos at that time was Farquhar Avenue because that was my shortcut to get to Costco so I could avoid the lights in Catella. <laughs> but I ended up moving and moving to Farquhar Avenue, so I'm very happy there. <laughs> it worked out just fine for me. So um, I was very um, pleased with it. I mean, with only three months of living here, you know, I opened my mailbox in October and there were Los Al Box. Who could not want to live in Los Alamitos? I thought, <laughs> this is a great place. And it's been great uh, since I moved here and I've really enjoyed it and I like the small town uh, feeling of it and, and all things that I've been able to do here. It's really been great. Terrific. Um, what special traits, characteristics, or experience would you bring to the commission? Well, I spent more than uh, 20 years at UCLA doing personnel issues, first with staff and then with uh, academic. Each has its own personal problems to deal with, and so you learn to step back. You really have to look at the whole issue and the individual that you're dealing with. And, you know, obviously when it's an appeal, this is someone's livelihood. They may be losing their job. They may not be able to advance. And so it's very difficult to stay um, neutral, but try and uh, deal with the situation, the individual, because you want to maintain the integrity of the process. And that's really uh, quite hard. And with the university, um, you know, I've had professors that have gone eight years at the assistant rank, and they come up, and they don't make it. And that's no tenure, and you're gone. Mm. So it's, you know, and these are people that you know, but you have to just look at the, uh, you know, everything and weigh it on what the balance is on that. But it's quite, they're all emotionally, I think. Anything that has an appeals or involved in the point can become very fraught with emotion. Sure. Um, and why do you want to serve on the commission? Um, totally self-serving. I applied because <laughs> I've been retired for five years and I've, you know, there's only so many times we can go to the gym or go out to lunch with the girls and I thought my brain is going to go soft soon. And maybe <laughs> I could find something better to do with my time. And I thought volunteer sounds good. This is, so that's why I saw that. But I'll throw my hat in the ring. Right, thank you. And what do you think um, are the most significant issues facing the commission? Well, that I don't know. I'm not really sure. I would think with the current employment situation, I have seen um, in my personal life with my kids and that, people don't have the longevity that used to be in a job, and it turns over quite a bit in various areas. So trying to keep people, hire the right people, keep them in the jobs, and also maybe you know protect the city from lawsuits so that you've gone through the whole appeals process, you've seen every side of the issue, and you have equity of each person can't point and say, well, last time they did it this way, and now you've done it that way. So I think that that's protecting the city of Los Alamitos, too, for that. And in your own words, what do you feel is the role of the commission? I, I think that, to really, to protect, the, to protect the employees so that they get a fair deal when something's going on as far as concerns, appeals, or if they're being let go, or uh, review. And again, to, pr to protect the cities so that you don't let someone go that didn't get a, uh, thinks they didn't get a good deal and then starts a lawsuit and then you have this whole big mess on your hand and things like that. But I think that helps the city along. Okay. 
And then what actions considered um, by the commission, how do you balance the best interest of the entire community versus your likes and dislikes? Well, I don't have, a, you know, maybe not here long enough to have likes or dislikes, but I, what I see the city doing, I adore. I mean, the park down the street that's on Farquhar and Cottonwood Park and the things that are out there and the programs, the Los Alamitos newsletter, I read that every week to see what else is going on. So I think that, there has, that it's just a, a place that I would want it to stay, not, not to grow, but to have new ideas. But you, you want to see that it, it goes on what it's been doing and, and to expand if you can bring in new things to go with it. Great. And anything else? No, that's it. All right. Thank you very much. All right, and last is the Traffic Commission and Maggie Marchese. Come on up. And then I have a question about procedure. Okay. Now, you should know these questions by heart, but I'll go ahead and ask them again. <laughs> thank you. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for repeating the questions because I might forget yeah. the order. <laughs> um, well, my name is Maggie Marchese, and I moved to the area about 10 years ago originally living um, in the Cypress area that overlaps into the Los Al School District. So I moved here for the school district. I got to know the area and um, about six years ago, almost seven, my husband and I, um, knowing the community, we intentionally bought in Los Alamitos because we love the community. And so we've been here, we're homeowners and um, yeah. yeah. All right, what special traits, characteristics, or experience do you bring to the Traffic Commission? Um, not direct experience in terms of traffic, but um, I have a business background. So I have, um, you know, 20 plus years experience just looking at things from a practical perspective. I also have um, 14 years in healthcare compliance. So I'm very familiar with dealing with rules and regulations and looking at real world problems and trying to address real world problems and come into compliance with regulations. So I think those things would be helpful. And why do you want to serve on the commission? Well, I love LaSalle, okay, and um, I, I believe that the city, you all do a great job of being open with our, the residents in the community. And I wanna be part of that, keeping that open channel of communication. And um, I want to help our community also be engaged in their community. Great. And what do you think are the most significant issues facing the Traffic Commission? Um, I would say that, you know, with all the growth and the density that we have in the surrounding areas, we're really seeing it in Los Al. You know, we're seeing an increase in, you know, just congestion, and that brings concerns from the community and also safety concerns. And in your own words, what do you feel is the role of the Traffic Commission? I feel the role is to incorporate community feedback and be that conduit to the city council and to help the city with, you know, practical recommendations to issues. Okay, great. And when considering actions by the commission, how do you balance the best interest of the entire community against the dikes, your own dis likes and dislikes? Well, I think in the business world, every you have to approach every problem practically and objectively. You always have competing issues and concerns. You have competing priorities. You have competing, you have monetary, budgetary concerns. You also have different opinions. So every problem has to be addressed objectively and in putting feelings aside and just addressing concerns with an openness. Great. Anything else? No, thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. All right, Mark, you had a question procedure? Yeah, so it looks like on Traffic Commission, we've got just the right amount of applicants for the open positions, right? So, so not as much of an issue there. But on the other ones, um, I was just going to suggest if we have our current incumbents who are reapplying, if they wanted to say anything, because otherwise we may, if they're here, otherwise we may end up voting without hearing from them. Um, 
Okay, so we have. If we um, have, it would. It would Alex. Be, Alex is here. Alex is here. You don't have to speak, Alex, but just if you wanted to, you could, or you can answer questions, or. And then Ray, I don't think he's here. There's oh, Ray. yes, there he is. You want to come up and say a little bit? Sure. Come on. <laughs> Tell us where you're from. Yeah. I'm from Los Alamitos, apartment row. <laughs> nah, Parks and Recs traffic. Parks and Recs traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently the chair for Parks and Recreation and Cultural Arts. I've been on the commission for four years. It's been an honor to serve. I've loved every minute of it. The team's great. And I think right now we're just getting our stride, so I'd love to serve an additional term. Great. That's Thank it. you. Thanks, and sir. Ray. Well, good evening. Uh, I'm Ray Joseph. I live in Los Alamitos. I've been here for about four years now. My family and I moved here for the sole reason of moving to this community. Uh, my child has special needs, so it's important for me to find a school district that's welcoming and open, and also has the opportunity to participate in Special Olympics. I know this community also focuses on that and opens up certain facilities to Special Olympics, which is also critical for diversity in this area. So that was the main reason and primary reason I joined the, uh, the, com uh, the committee. But as well, I've gotten the chance to work with exceptional individuals, your hardworking staff, and they're out there hustling each and every day to make sure kids have opportunities, adults have opportunities, our retirees have opportunities, and they're out there really working hard. So if you get a chance to get out there and see these, the, the wonderful services they provide, I think that's just been a, the exceptional part from my side of it. So I appreciate your time today. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And then do we have um, Robert Lee from the personnel? We gave him no warning to be here, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, so then procedurally for the park and rec. Um, so if you'd like, I can go ahead and pass out the indications of support, okay. and then um, upon council's deliberation, we'll, we'll need a motion in a second. Okay. Council, if you'll note, for Parks and Rec, we do have two full terms expiring December 2025 and one unexpired term that ex uh, ends December 2023. So we'll need to make appointments to the proper terms. And we do that by just indicating, uh, let's see here. You can write it to the side or we can make it part of the motion. Well, it will be part of the motion as well. Okay. So it's always a tough uh, position for us up here to, to have to decide who gets to get uh, involved in the community. We would love to have everybody involved. And there are other ways to get involved. So even if you don't end up selected for one of the com uh, commissions, you know, keep, keep your eye out. There's always ways to get involved um, apart from the commissions themselves. But thank you to everyone for, for uh, applying. We'll take them commission by commission. Okay. okay. Up first, we have the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Commission. They have four indications of support for Alex Duran, a full term, and four indications of support for Ray Joseph, a full term. Two indications of support for Wendy Cope, an unexpired term, and two indications of support for Joseph Haste for the unexpired term. 
which is why we have five on council. <laughs> so you can entertain a motion or you can vote again. It's up to you. Um, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion, see where it gets us. I'll, I'll move for um, Alex Duran, hold on, I just lost Joseph, and uh, Wendy Cope. I'm sorry, it was Alex Duran, Ray Joseph. And Wendy Cope. And Wendy Cope. Do we have a second? I'll second. So we have a motion by Mayor Hasselbrink, second by Mayor Pro Tem Doby, to appoint Alex Duran for a full term, Ray Joseph for a full term, and Wendy Cope for a term expiring uh, 2023. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Congratulations. And like I say, with, with the others, thank you so much for applying. Um, it's kind of nice to have more than enough people that want to be involved and we will find for ways for you to get involved trust me so thank you very much okay. and we'll move on to personnel appeals we have one indications of support for robert lee and three for lisa teal Leon. sorry congratulations lisa oh you can have a motion in a second i'm sorry i won't make a motion i'll second it <laughs> thank you you should let shelly do something <laughs> all in favor aye, aye. And then uh, for Traffic Commission, we have five indications of support for Randy Hill, Maggie Marchies, Javier Mejia, Bruce Murphy, and Daniel Patz. I'll make a motion to appoint them all. I will second. I'm keeping my mouth shut. All, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. And that concludes the all right. business. Thank you very much. And Thank we're going to go ahead and adjourn the special meeting and reconvene with our regular meeting at 6 o'clock. <laughs>